Because the lighting was very contrasty when I took this picture, I decided to bracket the exposure on the camera. So now what we've got is the exposure value for this one. This is the normal exposure value. You can see there it is. It is set to zero. We've now got this one, which is underexposed by one stop, and this one here, which is overexposed by one stop. Looking at them in bridge, what I've decided to do is to combine all three together to form an HDR style picture, but it's going to be a little bit of a twist as well. Now the first thing we need to do is to select all three images. Now this one's already selected, you can see the outline around it, so I'm going to press Command or Control, we're going to click on our second one, still holding down Command or Control, clicking on the third one, there's all three highlighted. If we now go to Tools, we can go to Photoshop and this is where we can load the files into Photoshop layers. This is going to take all three pictures, it's going to combine and it's going to give us our three different layers. Now if we take a look, we've got the normal exposure one, that's sitting on the top. We have got the minus one in the middle, the plus one at the bottom. So we need to make some adjustments. We're going to put the darkest one on the top. So clicking down, lifting that one up, that is now on the top. and. Uh, as we did that, you can see there is a bit of a wobble. Okay, it was handheld, but not going to worry. We can correct this. Now the top layer is highlighted. So pressing and holding down shift on the keyboard, we're now going to click on the bottom layer. All three are now highlighted. And to correct that wobble, we're going to go to edit. We're going to go down to auto align layers. Now under projection, we've got auto clicking OK to that and this is where Photoshop is working out where all the edges are it's combining them together and as quickly and as easily as that you can see there it is it's done a pretty good job right for the next stage we're going to be using channels so make sure that you're working on the top layer of the layer stack now if you haven't already got channels open you'll find it under window there it is at the top channels clicking on this and that's the panel for channels which is now open. Don't forget, we are working on the top layer of the layer stack. Bring your cursor over the thumbnail for the RGB. Press and hold down Command or Control. You'll notice the way your cursor changes. Clicking down, we have now made a selection and the area we've selected are of the darker pixels. If we come back over to the Layers panel, all we're going to do is we're going to drop down and we're going to put in a layer mask. Now this is going to take the selection and it's going to paste it into the layer mask. There it is. Let's take a look and see what it's actually done. If I just switch it on and off before we do that, you'll notice the way it's just brightened up the image in some of these darker areas just very slightly. I'm going to press Alt or Option. We're going to click down and there it is. It's just a black and white version. But where we've got the blacks, this is where it's now looking through on the layer mask to the layer underneath. Pretty nifty or what? Right, pressing the Alt or the Option key, just clicking to put it back into position. Right, let's go down to this layer here, our normal exposure value, back to channels, bringing our cursor over the thumbnail again, pressing down Command or Control to you get that square on the back of your hand, clicking down, there's a slightly different selection. We're going to go back to layers, we're going to put in a layer mask as we did before. You'll notice it's another black and white layer mask. And you'll also notice we can see a little bit more of the image. So we're starting to blend it together. Right, let's go to our background layer, our plus one exposure. Bring your cursor just over the writing area. And if you right click, we're going to go to convert to smart object. The reason for this is we're now going to go to image, adjustments. We're going to drop down to shadow and highlights. Clicking on Shadow and Highlights opens it up and you can see the difference that's making to the image. If I just switch this on and off, pretty amazing. Right, let's just take a look. Oh, by the way, if you can't see this, if you've just got that, just put a tick in the box where it says Show More Options. You've now got the full panel and if we come to the shadow area here, you can see the way we can just move this back and forth. We can increase the amount of uh, detail we got in the shadow areas here, the tonal width, if I just move this back and forth, just bringing it into this position here looks pretty good. Come into the radius, I'm going to move that into this position, something like this. This is a little bit like the feather between these two amounts, so I'm going to leave that on, but we've got, we got 46, okay, let's take a look at the highlights, moving this over. As we start to move it over, you can see the way we darken down the shadow areas here, so this is now on the highlights 
into this region looks pretty good again the tonal width just moving that across further into the right hand region so we're now going to 67 the radius once again just yeah, it's not doing a huge amount so I'm going to leave that roughly where it was adjustments color correction plus 20 is the default we can take it up we can add a little bit to the color we can drop it down we can take some of the color out let's go back to round about the plus 20 I'm gonna leave that where it is mid-tone contrast this is pretty good as we start to move it back and forth you can see the way we can adjust that I'm gonna take it into this region here and I'm gonna click OK to that that has now added this as a smart filter this is going to give us the advantage that we can come back into this at any stage and make some further adjustments for now I'm going to click cancel and we're going to fold this up out of the way right let's go back to the top layer of the layer stack we're going to click on the layer mask because when we were looking at that I've got the hand tool so I'm just going to press command or control let's pop into 50% of the image you'll notice that the picture itself isn't looking particularly sort of crisp it's a little bit on the hazy side so to fix this just make sure you're working on the mask so make sure that framework is around the mask area and now go to filter we're going to go to blur we're going to go to Gaussian blur and when this opens I'm just going to knock this back into this region that's the way it's looking and if we just start to take this up the more we take it up you'll notice the way the image starts to look a little bit crisper now you may need to experiment with this figure I found with the file size I'm using here around about the 40 pixel radius works pretty good but don't overdo this if you do take this up too far you begin to get fringing on the image so this looks pretty good there at 40 pixels switching on and off you can see there's the before that's what I meant by a little bit fuzzy a little bit hazy and we're going to click OK to that right let's drop down to the layer mask on this one here the mid-toned and we don't need to go through that process again all we need to do is if we just go back to filter there it is there Gaussian blue we've got command F control F so using that command F control F if we just do that it has now applied that blur then exactly the same settings to the exposure value here so we're going to go back to the top layer of the layer stack once again working on the mask area itself this time we're going to use command L control L command L control L is the shortcut for the levels dialog box now if we take a look we got the preset here of the default we got the channel it's the Celtic manner it's the minus one exposure JPEG and it's the mask so in other words we're working on the mask you'll notice we've got a very big gap here in the white point so I'm going to grab hold of this slider I'm going to move it in to the start and as I started to move that across you can see the difference that's already starting to make to the image doing exactly the same with the black point moving it in to the start of the histogram just in there just a very small amount now coming to the center slider here this is where something strange begins to happen because normally if we move it in this direction we introduce more of the lighter pixels move it into this direction we introduce more of the darker pixels however because we're working on the mask when we bring it into this direction we can make it brighter when we move it into this direction we can make it darker so it's working in the opposite because don't forget we are working on the layer mask I'm going to take it into this region here looks pretty good and I'm going to click OK to that you'll notice the way the thumbnail is now a lot brighter than the one underneath until we click on it and we use command L control L which brings up once again the levels dialog box moving the white point into this position here would be pretty good moving the black point so it just comes to the start of the histogram I'm just going to take the midpoint slider going to move it slightly across into that area we've got 1.27 and we're going to click OK to that right looking at the image you've got a little bit of a color cast going on okay we've got a fair bit of a color cast going on so for the next stage we're going to click on the top layer of the layer stack we're going to put in a new empty layer now press and hold down alt or option on the keyboard so holding down alt or option we're going to go to layer we're going to go down to merge visible now this is going to merge these layers here into this one new layer so clicking on merge visible in it goes right we're going to revisit image adjustment we're going to go down to match color which has got to be my favorite method of removing color cast from a picture right I'm going to move it out very slightly so we can see the entire picture if we click on neutralize watch what's going to happen 
looking pretty good. And what it's done, it's analysed, there's a fair bit of green in this, so it's put in the opposite colour, which happens to be magenta, which I think is overdone slightly. Well, quite a bit. So coming to the fade slider, moving this across to the right hand side, going to take it into this area here. Looks pretty good like that. Color intensity, we can take this up. We can increase the colors in the picture to round about that area there. Looks pretty good. The luminance is going to make it brighter. So we're going to take it into this area, default being 100 with both the color intensity and the luminance. That looks pretty good like this. Once again, just checking out the fade slider, seeing which way is going to be the best with this. So just dropping it down into that position. We've got 33. Taking a look at the preview. There's the before. There's the after. We're going to click OK to that and just waiting for it to go through. Job done. So there it is. We have now just corrected the color cast in our picture, improved the colors just a little bit as well. Right for the next stage. If you look at the image, you can see we've got checkable background forming a bit of a wedge here and then we've got dark areas coming around the outside at this point and around the bottom and around the left hand side. So let's take a look at uh, correcting this little bit of a lean and also cropping the image. I'm going to press C on the keyboard which is going to give me the crop tool. In with the crop tool we've got the straighten tool. So let's pick up the straighten tool. I'm going to zoom in over this area here. So I'm using command space bar, control space bar, dragging my way into this position and if we click down we can now click, lift it out. It's going to drag it down into the bottom here and this is telling me I am uh, yeah, minus 0 0.3 degrees out clicking down you'll notice the difference this has made now using command 0 control 0 that's command 0 control 0 we go out to fit on screen we're now going to bring our cursor up we're going to pick up the grab handles we're going to move these around so I'm going to lift it up until we get just to the underside of that checkable background which has now disappeared we're going to pull this in so we come just to the edge where we got a little bit of a hazy effect with the blacks doing exactly the same on the bottom and the same to the left hand side just hoping that I get that water coming through that looks pretty good like this now I'm not deleting the pixels I've actually switched this off just in case I want to make any changes I don't think I will but for the PSD file I always tend to leave it unchecked right looking at the picture there's the story so far I'm going to press H on the keyboard to give me back my hand tool and uh, I think what I'd like to do next is darken down the sky very slightly Make sure you've got the default colors in the toolbox. So press D on the keyboard to restore your default colors. Coming over to the thumbnail on layer one, we're going to double click, which brings up layer styles. If we drop down to gradient overlay, so ticking on this, you'll notice we've now got the gradient overlay. There's our default colors. It's black on the bottom. It's white on the top with a nice gradient between the two, but we're going to click on reverse. That looks better. We're now going to double click which brings up the gradient editor, go into presets, making sure we have got black to transparent. So that's the second little icon in, click on this. So we've now got black through to the checkable background transparent. Click OK to that. Blend mode, normal. We're going to change this to soft lights, looking better like this. Now if you bring your cursor out, you'll notice it's the move tool. And what we've actually done is we've created a neutral density filter and I'm just going to lift it up into this area here, which looks pretty good. And let's just reduce down the opacity into this area, switching off the preview. There's the before, there's the after. Like what it's doing to the picture. Again, this is all going to be totally adjustable. So lifting it up very, very slightly into that position, switching the preview on and off, liking the way that's looking. However, not sure I like the magenta. This is now putting it into the sky. There it is on our white clouds but we can adjust this by going to the blending options. With the blending options, we're going to drop down to blend if. Now we're going to go to the underlying layer and we're going to use the white slider here. And if we move it in, you can see there it is. That's the difference it's making, but a little bit harsh. So bring your cursor over to the left hand side of this slider. Now press down the Alt or the Option key, clicking on the Alt or Option, and because we clicked on the left hand side, we can now split the slider. This is going to make a fine tuning possible, or even make fine tuning possible, if I get my words right, which would be a first. We can move it into this position here, that looks better, and once again, looking at the preview, there's the before, there's the after, click OK to that. That has now added a gradient overlay, switching it on and off, 
job just about done. Right, let's put in an adjustment layer. This time we're going to go to, uh, let's go to Vibrance. And with Vibrance, I'm going to move this across to the right hand side. So taking it into the plus area, something like that looks pretty good. Right, there it is. Another adjustment layer. This time we're going to go to Levels. And if we check out Levels, I'm going to press and hold down Alt or Option. So hold down the Alt or Option key, come to the white point slider, click down, we can move this in and what we're going to have, try and avoid is where you got that solid white because now where we got the solid white there is no pixel detail in this area here so we need to back this right the way up probably I'm going to take it just into this area here which would be pretty good just releasing it, that looks good like that coming to the black point once again pressing Alt or Option we can move this in. This time we're going to avoid the solid black because where you've got solid black, once again, there is no pixel detail. So moving this back across into this area here, and we can just check it out by pressing down that Alt or Option key. That position would be pretty good like this. The center slider here, the gamma slider, if we move it to the right, we can now darken down the picture. Remember what it was doing to the mask, the total opposite. This time we can move it across to the left-hand side we can brighten up the picture. I'm going to take it into this area here. That looks pretty good like that. And there it is. There is our finished image. Put it aside. Keep it in layers. You can come back to it. You can make any adjustments, including reducing down the vibrance. Perhaps you might want to do that a little bit. You can take a look at this layer here. You may want to reduce down the opacity on this layer. You can see the way we can blend it in. You can even come back to our smart filter here, shadow and highlights, and you may want to just increase this. And as we start to increase this up, you can see the way we can brighten up the image there. It's working through the layer stack into this position. I'm just going to do that because I quite like the way it's looking at the moment anyway. But there it is. Job done. Don't be afraid to play with the layers until you get the type of effect that you're looking for. I'm going to leave this on 71%, uh, 79%, should I say. I've got the hand tool, but I'm going to use Command 1, Control 1. Let's pop into 100% of the picture. There it is. You can see we've got some detail coming through in the shadow area here. Let's zoom over to our rocks. That's looking pretty good, the way we blended the images together. It does look a little bit soft at this stage, but by the time you resize it and sharpen it, believe me it'll look really good so there it is there's our finished image you can see the detail we got there just wanted to show you the tonal range around this part of the image so go on give it a try just going to put it onto a black background there it is going to press tab on the keyboard command zero control zero to put it on fit on screen go on give it a try until the next time it is happy imaging and take care